Hey there, everyone. This is Dan from The Strange Coach Tutor. Hope you guys are all doing well. Thanks for checking out today's video. Today, we are going to talk about enzymes. And this is a question I get a ton, a ton, a ton of questions on uh, when I go through uh, Chapter 3, Bioenergetics, in uh, the Essentials of Strength and Conditioning textbook when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions with my students. It's a uh, it's kind of hard to piece the puzzle, pieces of the puzzle together when we're trying to figure out what do these enzymes do, where, you know, where do they fit into the piece of the puzzle, et cetera, right? So let's first define what an enzyme in, is. So an enzyme is this chemical that helps catalyze, or if you will, kickstart a reaction. So all of these energy systems that we learn about are different types of chemical reactions, right? There's, whether there's one step or there's several steps, these enzymes are going to help kickstart that process and catalyze that process so they can happen uh, sooner and faster. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go through some of the most uh, common enzymes that we not only just tend to see questions on, I believe, um, you know, through undergrad and through the exam and so forth, but I think that can are more applicable to what we see on a more day-to-day -day basis, even though we may not talk this language directly with our athletes or our clients, we can understand this at a much deeper level so that we have a better understanding of how we can apply this information. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I pulled up my whiteboard here to go through this list of enzymes I've compiled together for you guys. Again, these are all in chapter three, Bioenergetics in the Essentials of Strength and Conditioning textbook, fourth edition. So let's first go through uh, this energy system that we have here. If you wanna call it an energy system, technically I like to think of it as one, and that's hydrolysis, all right? So hydrolysis, if you can recall, is the breakdown of ATP in order to therefore release energy, right? Because ATP, just free floating by itself, doesn't do anything until we break it down for us, right? We're not getting any energy from ATP until we break it down into ADP, and then if we can, into AMP in reality, right? So the first one I want to mention here is adenosine triphosphate, or ATPase, all right? This is the primary enzyme um, to help kickstart this reaction of hydrolysis. But more specifically, there's variations or different forms, if you will, of this ATPase. And as you can see of this list uh, below here, so we have myosin, and I apologize, I spelled that uh, incorrectly there, but that's myosin ATPase. We have calcium ATPase and sodium potassium ATPase, all right? So myosin ATPase is gonna more specifically help with that cross bridging. So that therefore, right, those myosin heads can latch on to troponin and tropomyosin. Then of course, uh, calcium uh, ATPase and sodium potassium ATPase are gonna help uh, regulate, um, you know, of course, the release of calcium into the sarcoplasm in particulum and the roles of sodium and potassium. Now, let's talk about the phosphogen system here. So with the phosphogen system, when we actually look at that chemical reaction, um, you know, or what uh, compounds do we need, creatine kinase is directly involved uh, with that reaction, okay? Um, now, where adenylate kinase comes in, it's not directly uh, involved with the phosphogen system, but what it does is that if we have two ADP, right, and so ADP is a byproduct of um, hydrolysis, right, because we have to split off a phosphate molecule off of ATP to make it ADP. So if we have two ADPs, this can, can adenylate kinase helps us convert those two ADPs into one ATP and one AMP, okay? So therefore, this helps us kind of replenish our AT, uh, ATP stores a little bit faster, right? And the faster we can replenish those stores, the faster then we're going to be able to uh, be ready to create more energy, if you will, right? And this is especially important, um, you know, for your, any type of athlete that's high intensity, short duration, um, utilizes a very high um, percentage of type two muscle fibers. These are the athletes that are gonna benefit um, from adenylate kinase there, all right? Now, two of the uh, most important enzymes in glycolysis that I think are important are, uh, the first one being phosphofructokinase. So phosphofructokinase, is basically this kind of um, last enzyme there. So if you remember the first two steps in glycolysis, we actually need two ATP to start to then kind of get this whole ball rolling, if you will, so that we can create more ATP. And so it's right after we use up that second ATP to kind of kickstart all this going, it's that PFK that kind of helps us do that, if you will, to get through that last part so that we can actually then start that chemical reaction of going through all those different steps and then creating some ATP and then obviously at the very end, getting pyruvate, right? 
And then of course, pyruvate can go in one of two directions. Um, but yeah, so that's where PFK is gonna come is in that last step of in the beginning that uh, when we're using that second ATP um, to then transition to that next phase where it branches out and actually start to make ATP. And then lastly, lactate dehydrogenase, super simple. This is just the enzyme that helps us convert pyruvate into lactate. That's it, simple as that. All right, guys, well, I hope you guys found uh, this quick description on enzymes useful and hopefully it helps categorize things in your mind a little bit better and uh, leaves you with a better understanding of how to process these enzymes and some of their functions. If you guys have any other questions, please do not uh, hesitate to leave any comments below. Please do me a favor and like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And if you guys need more help with your CSCS exam prep, you can, of course, always head to thestrengthcoachtutor.com where you can work one-on-one -on -one with me and also join our online classroom that continues to grow, grow, grow. All right, guys, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend.